the other thing I want to ask you about uh, that's in the news a lot at the moment is, is phone hacking. Um, it comes and goes from the news, but it's dominated much of the news for the last few months. Is it something... It's unfortunate. It's, it's uh, unfortunate. It's not attractive, Richard. What do you, what do you mean? I mean, you know, like something when, when something's attractive, like, I don't know, like, um, um... Lulu. Lulu. Th thanks, Graham. <laughs> when something's attractive, like Lulu, then that's attractive. And something like, um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, uh, in the morning, for example, is very unattractive. Phone hacking's like Andrew Lloyd Webber. Exactly. But, but one thing that really bugs me is when people try to drag Paul Dacre from the Daily Mail into this. He's really, the editor, isn't he? The, Daily he, Mail. the editor of the Daily Mail. The people try to drag him, and he has nothing to do with this. And yet people keep trying to drag him into it, saying the Daily Mail must know about this kind of thing. And it's, it, it's rotten as heck, because I'm sure, I know uh, Paul, he's a lovely man, I'm sure he'd be all, all more than happy to uh, stand before a public inquiry and say under oath that uh, his newspaper had no knowledge of these things, because he's that kind of man. And I'm sure equally uh, responsibly, I'm, I'm, I know, I'm almost certain, I mean, I'll, I'll bet good money on it, that he's told all his staff to preserve all the emails that I've exchanged over the last few years. Uh, so that uh, should they become subject to any kind of scrutiny, they'll have all the information ready for the police. That's the kind of guy he is, Richard. People have a go at Paul Dacre, but do we really want to see the Daily Mail go to the wall? If the, if the newspaper did, how would I... Who would be there to stand up for the persecuted minority of people from fairly comfortable areas who are middle-aged and not... Coloured. I mean, pe I mean, not pe persons of colour. That's what I meant. Which is a term that's acceptable in America. Obviously, coloured is an offensive term. No, I would never use the word. Co no, it's pe well, you just did, didn't you? you should use the word coloured. Well, I so. did. This whole political correctness really bugs the heck out of me, uh, uh, Richard. You know, I mean, it, 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 you can't say boo to a goose these days. You probably couldn't say even boo. That's probably seen as, uh, and you probably even couldn't use the word goose. They probably could have called them feathered dogs. It. That's how bad it's got in my head. Um, the, you know, the, I mean, if it weren't for the Daily Mail, how would I know, how, who would be fighting against the constant stream of asylum seekers who comes into the country? No one. How would I be able to monitor the value of my house? Um, you know, I, 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 I've no intention of selling it, but the value of my house is a very, very important to me. <laughs> who would be standing up for, yeah, the people who have to... People in the top, ta the top tax band. People go on about, ooh, Paul Doker this, Paul Doker that. He's a lovely man. So what if his newspaper has hired more private detectives to uh, use in subterfuge than any other newspaper? What does that say? Nothing. It just says that they're pretty, you know, they're pretty hard-working people who like to leave no stone unturned. People, oh, you know, people have a go at Paul Dacre for employing more private detectives than any other newspaper. How else are they supposed to get news unless they you know, employ a record number of private detectives. Just finally, Alan, before you go, I, I, I've read the book from cover to cover. Uh, I, I loved it. I think, as I said earlier, I think it's the funniest book that I've ever read. I think there are people out there who'd like to hear it in your voice. Have you recorded, are you planning to record an audio book for iPartridge? I have recorded an audio book. Uh, originally, I intended to have it uh, read by Trevor Eve, um, but uh, his fee was astronomical. Ainsley Harriet was uh, more affordable, but I felt that it was in inappropriate to use him for a number of reasons. Um, not least his inherent frivolity, I think, was at odds with the, with the gravitas of some of the passages in the book. Um, in the end, it was between John Stapleton and me, and uh, I got it. Well done. So it's, uh, yeah, so, I mean, the, it, it does exist. Um, I think it's being released now or imminently. Uh, over seven hours of me reading the book out loud. Alan Partridge, thank you. It's uh, great to meet you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Richard. I always enjoy you with my breakfast. B b b uh, what, you, what with your surname having a dual... The puns didn't work earlier, did they? So I wouldn't read... Okay. I wouldn't bother right. revisiting, revisiting them. Thank you. Thank you.